Hey everyone, it's me Curtis. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you're a returning subscriber. By the title of today's video, you guys know that in today's video, I'm going to be showing you all how to make a relatively easy DIY CNC style hedgehog cage. I really didn't do much research or watch many other videos about people who have, you know, made CNC cages for their hedgehogs or even guinea pigs because I know that's kind of where this whole thing kind of originated, at least to my understanding. On that note, I looked a little bit into CNC cages, what you need to make them, and I'm kind of just going to be going out on a limb today with a couple of materials that I have here that I'm going to be showing you guys what I picked up for a relatively um, inexpensive price, which is like probably the best part of today's video. Now before we get on into the instructional part of today's video, I just want to let you guys know kind of why I'm building this cage. Obviously, if you guys have been here on my channel before, you know that I do have a hedgehog named Leonidas. We call him Leo. He just turned three on the 10th of November, actually, of this year, 2020. And he's been living in a bin cage for a majority of his life. He was in a custom 50 gallon, which now one of my bearded dragons lives in. Um, but essentially he's been kind of traveled, he's gone through a couple different enclosures and I actually have a video on like the setup and everything, if you guys like to check that out it'll be linked up here for you guys to see. It is technically a suitable enclosure that if you see a lot of breeder setups it kind of looks along those lines. However, he really does need more room and I would definitely love for him to be down from the top of my animal shelf and I'm actually going to be putting him on the top of my Lindman because I have a shelf that runs here which has a 20 gallon tank on it with like a blanket and then I have like presents, Christmas presents and stuff up there. But I'm going to be moving all that stuff around and just have him down so that he's more, you know, accessible. But that's enough rambling so let's just get on into today's video. <laughs> Alright guys, so sorry about the frame change and everything like that. Um, I actually had to pause to take like an hour break so that I could charge my battery because my camera was dying a bit. But um, right now is when I'm just going to show you guys all the materials that you're going to need in order to create this cage. First off, the main thing, of course, the little cubes. So these are the grids that I got. They are the Relaxed Living brand. It just says wire cube shoving unit. This is what the box looks like for the specific one that I got. As you guys can see, um, it comes with four grids, and these are 12 by 12, I believe. Yeah, so that is, so when it's all said and done, this will uh, meet the minimum cage size for hedgehogs. Anyway, this was only $20. I didn't sign up for any rewards, anything like that. This was from um, Bed Bath & Beyond. They also had um, a black one, which was like the actual model display in the store, but they didn't have it in stock, so I did have to get the gray one. All right, guys, so the next thing you're going to need is what is right here um, behind me, and that is plastic corrugated sheets, or whatever you want to call it. Most people will call it Coroplast. Um, it's literally corrugated plastic. I did buy these from, I was about to say Petco. <laughs> I bought those from Home Depot and these are a bit expensive. One of these sheets is $10 and you're going to need two for this design. Finally today I actually picked up some other last couple minute things. These are both from the Dollar Tree, so literally a dollar. The first just being some packing tape, it's this thick one, you really don't want like the thin stuff. And then these are kind of optional maybe. Um, but these are just nylon cable ties, again, Dollar Tree, they come with 25 each, I got two packs just because I'm always using these for other things as well. I believe that's all you're going to need for today's video, so let's just get right on into the tutorial. Alright you guys, so um, here I just have the shoving unit, we're just going to open it up. that we okay yeah so oh wow you actually get a good amount of um connectors as you guys can see here anyways just grab these bad boys out of the box all right guys so my idea for this cage is going to be like a one by four layout so it's pretty much pretty self-explanatory just watch see what i do and i'll talk to you guys when i need to <laughs> pieces don't actually go in like the middle really like that so um it's a little bit weird because they're going to be sticking out so i'm just going to assemble them with these connectors but i may just go back in after and see how it all looks and connect them with zip ties <laughs> pieces on the back. It is, can, or can you see that? <laughs> All right, 
So this is the general sheet, literally complete, that took all of maybe five or six minutes. Figuring out how to use some of the pieces was a little bit difficult in the beginning, but after you understand how the pieces work, it's pretty much well um, smooth sailing from there. So obviously these top pieces are not supported with anything. They're actually pretty well put in place, but there's still a good amount of connectors left. So I'm gonna see if I have enough to just connect the middles of all these, and I'll let you guys know what happens after that. Okay, so I just finished the beast design of this, and I will say that this is extremely sturdy. Highly recommend that shelf over there. Um, I actually ended up with three spare grids, as well as a spare connector piece here. And as you guys can see, everything is even across the board. I had enough for the um, all four corners, as well as all of the connected pieces here in the middle and it looks great. I may add these on a little bit and play with them to see. Actually, yeah, I think I might do that. That might be cool. Just like that, so that I can have like a lid on the ends. I don't know, I'll figure it out and then I'll update you guys. All right guys, so here is the pretty much probably most likely the final design layout of what the cube arrangement is going to be. Like I said, I had three extra pieces and they don't just actually lay on the top. You could lay them on the top like I showed in the last clip, but they wouldn't be secure. They are literally secure now because um, I slid them in those pieces there. His wheel is a 12 inch um, comfort wheel and it's gonna be perfectly able to just kind of stick out of there and wheel out of there. Now I'm going to remove these three grids from the top so that we can have an open access space here. And then we are going to start planning out how we're going to cut and organize this coroplast. Alright guys, so now for our coroplast, all I have done is taken my measuring tape with um, an at 12 inch mark so that now I can take my level and just mark a straight line going down where I know I'm going to have 12 inches going down. But when you measure it out, it's like a little bit longer on this side than it is here. So when we use this side, we're going to have to cut it. But this is the side that we want. And now we're just going to take our level and, you know, and a little blade or something and then cut that out. I was able to measure it, I mean, and cut it all the way through. So now this is the piece that we want. We're not gonna cut this piece at all. And what we're gonna do is actually just lay this inside of our cage as the flooring, because that's what it is gonna function as. And then we're gonna measure the distance from here to the end of the cage, like this area that has no floor yet. Yeah, it comes up to about 13 and a quarter inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this remaining piece. So even though this is slightly bigger, it does fit perfectly still. Um, and I'm just going to cut that remaining size, which for me is 13 and a quarter. Uh, and we're going to cut that. Alright guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to take that clear packing tape that we had earlier and these two pieces that we had now have cut, we're gonna face them uncut to uncut side. As you guys can see, I did mention earlier how there is gonna be a little bit extra of a lip on one end, but that really is not gonna make a huge difference. So you can kind of put it in the middle and then with a little lip on the end here, we're just gonna go ahead and lay our tape. cut it at the end and now we have one continuous bottom piece now with our newer um, second piece of coroplast we're gonna do six inches six inches six inches and then the last six inches this is gonna give us four strips and this is what we're gonna use to make the sides of uh, our cage
Okay, cool. Just cut myself open. Alright guys, so as you guys saw, uh, my finger literally started like bleeding like crazy off camera because uh, the new blades like jolted out. It was a cheap blade essentially and all the new blades like sliced my finger really thin. And now I have my exacto knife. Uh, I hope this will do the job. <laughs> Honestly, um, after I got rid of that bleed, the cuts just got terrible. And hopefully, this can be a part that I don't use. At least now we have our four six pieces. Or no, we have our four six inch pieces. All right, you guys, so sorry, I have to talk a little bit lower for this section of the video. It's just getting really late in my house. But pretty much what I did was, you remember how we had four of those six inch pieces? Well, two of them we did not cut at all. As you guys can see, we have one full piece there, as well as one full piece here. And then we had those second two ones and the second two pieces. For me personally, I just cut another 13, point, uh, 13 and a quarter inches off of the end. All right, guys, 13 and a quarter inches going that way. Same thing with this. So it cuts off in the same place. I just flipped it because it looks better, but um, same thing here. That extra 13.5 inches, we cut off of the last two pieces. So now we're just left with that. Oh, like I mentioned, um, these were not cut that nice, so I'm not gonna really try and use those. But we do have this piece that was left from the floor. Uh, if you guys remember that, so as you guys can see, this does fit pretty tight for me. So I'm going to probably have to cut it a little bit. But what we're gonna do here is we're going to cut six inches here again, as well as another six inches. So measure six inches, cut it here, another six inches, cut it there. So this is the exact layout of how I want the floor planes to look. So what I'm going to do is essentially like squeeze them together and then tape just along the top. I'm not going to like do the whole thing where I flip over and all that kind of stuff um, because I'm going to try a different method. As you can see, I have finally taped it. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but it does not have to be at all because this is really just going to go up and down and that's all we want um, in order for our CNC cage to be functional, you know, and it's going to be covered by fleece or bedding or whatever. And now we're just going to literally do the same thing with our side pieces, so right there and right here. And just again, one piece of tape there, one piece of tape there. Alright, so now these sides are taped on and in place. Now, um, all we're going to do now is literally just lift up our corners, pieces, and you can tape the outside, you can tape the inside, honestly do whatever you want. I have one tip, if you're not going to actually tape this seam right here, uh, to keep these two together, I would definitely caulk, and I think that's what I'm going to do, as well as even throughout the whole entire thing. But at the very least, you should get some support on the outside of all four of your corners. All right, you guys, I am finally done. Oops, with taping this base. Um, this was definitely way more time-consuming than I thought, especially because I'm trying to be quiet with this super loud tape. Um, I did four corners on the outside going up as well as all the whole entire base going around the um, bottom, as you guys just saw. Sorry I didn't really record the process, but I mean, it's not really hard to just tape down the edges. And then, now we're just going to get this inside and hope that it fits. Now a tip, you're gonna have to take these off because these like go an inch or so, just like I said, for the floor outward. So you're gonna need to take all the top pieces off in order to get this to successfully go in there. Okay, as you guys can see, now the Coroplast base is in. I'm honestly so happy that it's done. Um, at least the hard part. Um, I kind of like how I didn't really have to use zip ties for anything because then it still allows me to have this kind of fully adjustable if I ever want to expand it, etc. What I'm going to do is just take some silicone and go along the four corners up. So this is the silicone that I'm going to be using. Um, I've used this in DIY enclosures in the past and I've had no problems with it. Um, if you want to use an aquarium based silicone um, that's made for aquariums, I actually highly recommend that um, rather than this. But since you know the, most of this is going to be covered by fleece and also I'm only using this in the corners, um, I am going to be using this and I got this from Home Depot.
guys, so now that the silicone is on here, I have to let this cure for probably like 48 hours. I don't remember exactly what it is, but all I'm going to do is assemble the cubes back together so you guys can see what the completed result looks like. And that is it. We have finally completed this cage. I want to say that it probably took no more than an hour and a half to two hours to do everything um, from the time I started assembling it until right now where it's very much done. Obviously, like I said, if you are going to use the caulk or any type of sealant, you're going to want to let that cure for probably at least 24 hours. Stay tuned because I will be doing a how to set up a hedgehog cage video most likely right after this one. Alright guys, so I just put the CNC cage where it's going to be for good. As you guys can see, it fits pretty nicely on top of my uh, Lindman cage for my hamster. Uh, honestly guys, I'm just super happy with it. This is literally exactly what I had envisioned. Um, I think the lights that I also have under it that continue also look really cool. Alright guys, and that's it for today's video. I hope you really, really enjoyed watching today's video. I'm really extremely happy with the way that this cage turned out. And I hope that you guys as well um, will try this out. It's a pretty inexpensive cage to make for your hedgehog or any other small animal, like I said. Or actually not every other small animal, but, you know, be creative, expand on this idea. And definitely let me know down below in the comment section below if you guys try this cage out. You can click here to um, view my hedgehog playlist and see a bunch of other hedgehog videos that I have here on my channel. And don't forget that you guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram to just keep up with me and the pets when I'm not here posting on YouTube all the time. Other than that, I'm really glad that I was able to get this video out to you guys. I plan on having a video with me setting this cage up with like some new toys and uh, things like that for him as well for you guys, kind of like a cage tour. So be on the lookout for that as well, hopefully sometime in the near future. Aside from that, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys again so much for watching today's video and I hope to see you all in the next one.